Transfection, what is it, how does it work, and why is it useful? Transfection is the process of artificially introducing nucleic acid, such as DNA or RNA, into cells, utilizing any means other than viral infection. This can cause the cells to change, making it possible to study gene function as well as protein expression in the context of a cell. There are two main types of transfection, transient, transfection and stable transfection. Transient transfection introduces a nucleic acid only for a limited time since it is not integrated into the genome of the cell. Therefore, this genetic material will not be passed on during cell division. In other words, there is no cross-generational inheritance. Depending on what method is utilized, a transgene transfected in a transient manner can usually be detected for one to seven days. Supercoiled DNA is most efficient, but siRNA, miRNA, or mRNA, and even proteins can also be used. Transfected DNA is translocated into the nucleus for transcription, while the transfected RNA remains in the cytosol, where it is expressed within minutes. If you like the video so far, please take a sec to subscribe. Do it! Stable transfection, on the other hand, allows foreign DNA to either integrate into the cellular genome or otherwise remain as episomal plasmid. This allows the DNA to remain permanently within the cell. In other words, DNA that has been integrated through stable transfection is also inherited cross-generationally. However, the expression level is usually lower in stable transfection compared to transient transfection, since usually it's only possible to integrate a few copies of foreign DNA into the genome. Stable integration is also a lot rarer, making effective gene delivery and the incorporation of a selective marker vital. The best way to select successfully transfected cells is to include a selectable marker such as an antibiotic resistant gene or something similar. Then one can expose cells to the substance that successfully transfected cells have become resistant to in order to sort out unsuccessful cases. In other words, cases where the gene has not been successfully transfected. In addition, one can use a marker that causes morphological or phenotypical changes. To successfully perform stable transfection, linear DNA is preferable to supercoiled DNA. So, how is transfection actually useful? Well, it is most commonly used to express a protein of interest in cultured cells through the use of a plasmid vector or mRNA. One can also use transfection to express protein in eukaryotic cells, allowing for proper folding and post-translational modifications to take place. In addition, transfection can also be used to create pluripotent stem cells, iPSC, and various therapeutic molecules. Finally, transfection is also used as a way to cause gene inhibition. This is done by using RNA interference or RNAi. If you want to learn more about one method of transfection, electroporation, which is one of the most common ways to cause transfection, check out this video.